Hello, I am joined by Kevin Bubols today, who is from NCL. Now, previously you were managing director of Europe, but now you are overseeing Europe. Middle East and Africa, actually, and to make Africa. Complete. How have the first few months in the new role been? It's been exciting, exciting start. Uh, it's been uh, at the end of last year that we've made this change. So um, right at the beginning of the year, I made it a priority to come out and visit the new markets and get to know some of the partners that I knew on paper um, by name and some of them I had met before, but now in person and on location as well. So um, I really started out with a trip and we were in Dubai as well and met a lot of uh, our good partners there. And everybody was in a good mood coming finally out of this crisis, which is behind us. And um, we've picked up on that since. So right now we are in the preparation for going into the close in uh, booking cycle for the Europe product. Um, we still have a little bit left to sell there. Um, it's actually, we're in a very good book position, but there will be stuff that we can still sell through our partners. And it's exciting because um, the markets are now really getting ready to, to book um, the Mediterranean and, and products like that in a, in a bigger volume as well. And uh, so we're seeing some really good activities in market right now with our partners. And I hope you enjoyed meeting all the agents in the Middle East. Yes, absolutely. It's always nice to come out. And uh, we've had a lovely few days in, in Dubai. As always, everybody is very welcoming. And I think we were all happy to also be able to see each other in person again and, and have a good meal together and discuss future plans. And I think everybody has a lot of good plans for the future now. It's, uh, it's excited. Travel is back. Well, it's fabulous to have NCL so present here in the region. Can you tell me, for the agents who are watching, what are the unique selling points and the positioning of NCL within the market? Yeah, so I think we fit very well in the market where uh, we are a high quality um, provider. Um, so we have cruise ships in a, in a very high quality, something that's very much appreciated in, in these markets as well. Um, but we have slightly bigger ships, which mean that we have enough space on the ship to offer a huge variety of activities, of restaurants and bigger staterooms as well. So when you look across our fleet, the unique thing, we used to call it freestyle cruising, and we used to talk about that a lot in marketing, but this freedom and flexibility that you have on the ship, the choice of restaurants, the choice of things to do, all in a very, very high quality, right? Very top quality restaurants, Broadway entertainment, actually on the, the new ship that's coming up, the Viva, we will have Beetlejuice, which uh, also ran on Broadway, and we'll have one of the actors that was in the original Broadway show there as well. So this is Dang. type of quality that we bring to the market, which fits very well into the the market as well in in uh, in our region here. So, and it's very good for the the Arabian market because you've got things like the Haven, which is your ship within a ship concept. Um, but then you've also got cabins within the ship, which is ideal for people traveling with domestic um, staff, which is very common for people traveling yeah. over the summer months. So you can really cater to big extended parties, which is what the Middle East is really known for in terms of traveling en masse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you're right. We've thought it through exactly also from that perspective. So in our suites, um, you have also, you have the Haven complex, which is this ship in ship key card access only where only the people that live in the suite complex have access to their own little world and they can always retreat back to that and privacy with their own restaurant, own sun deck, butler and concierge services and everything. But you also have suites that have connecting smaller staterooms, like a normal balcony cabin right next to it, and you have a connecting door. So you could have maybe the nanny stay in there or the, the kids go in there with the nanny. And then you have a lot of flexible ways to to do something with, with the, the cabin mix that we have. And we have a quite vast cabin mix. So I think we are especially uh, well set up for what you just said, uh, the multi-generational travel that is so popular, right? Yeah, absolutely. And something for every age range, right? So you've got stuff for the kids, stuff for the adults, stuff for the grandparents. Yeah. So for those yeah. family groups, there's just, yeah, there's so much variety. They're great ships. Um, you recently announced an update to your sustainability targets also. Can you tell us um, what that update is and how they're going to be achieved? Yeah, so we're a part of the journey that we're all on as humanity, I would say in big words, <laughs> but um, it's a transformation right now to, to come to sustainable um, uh, fuels in our case, mainly sustainable. Um, how do you make airplanes 
chips, big machinery, industries, sustainable. So that's a, a, an unsolved question at this point yet. Um, so we have committed ourselves to, in line with the Paris Agreement, meet the targets to be net zero by 2050. And we are now on a journey. And we've said from the beginning, uh, we need to make it a serious journey, not just talk about it. We need to have clear goals. And so what we just did now on Earth Day is that we've launched um, commitments to um, reduce the first 10% versus 2019 is always our reference in, in greenhouse gas emissions um, by 2025, end of 2025. And then um, five years later, by 2030, we want to be at 25%. That sort of forms the baseline. And then by then new ships that we will build and new type of engines that we are currently working with the industry as well on developing will kick in. We will get more of these new ships. Already the last two ships of our current order of new ships um, they will be delivered in 26 and 27 they are built to be methanol ready methanol is one of these new fuels that is uh, can be done completely sustainable um, so um, then that will be the the, the final 75% will have to be the alternative fuels that are coming in over time but it's a journey um, the important thing is to set um, concrete goals for now Mm -hmm. So the first 10% is very much about reduction and efficiencies on the way you operate the ships nowadays already. And um, so that will be the first steps. And then at some point, the new technologies will kick in stronger. And talking about things in the pipeline alongside sustainability between now and 2027, what can we expect from NCL? Yeah, so we have five more ships uh, coming up in the Prima class, uh, where you saw the Prima being launched last year. Norwegian Viva will be launched this August. Um, and then we will have uh, in total five, uh, five more ships uh, coming in the future. So that's the new ship class that has even more space on the ship. Uh, and even more beautiful, the Haven now at the aft of the ship overlooking the, the wake of the ship very beautiful, as you can see on the imagery. Um, so that is something that will keep us busy. These ships, the first two will be identical twins. Um, so Viva and, and Prima. Um, the next set, the next two will be slightly bigger already. And the last two will be another step slightly bigger, but also um, then having the methanol ready engines. And in uh, in this development of getting slightly bigger, again, it's to have more space for all the choice that we want to have on board. It's not to cram in more people. We are not building these ships uh, to fit in a lot of people. You can compare the ships as well as the trade partners do as well on a regular basis. And you will see other companies that have ships in the similar size. We put 3,000 people on, they put 5,000 people on. So for us, it's more about using the space um, and having having a lot of room for the choice that we want to offer. Again, that's the quality approach that we go. And do we know at this point if we're going to have the dining hall? I love the dining hall on um, the Prima. Is that going to continue? Yes. Yeah, that's the So the food hall, the indulged food hall, um, that's one of the hits on our ship currently. Um, for those that haven't seen it yet, it's um, a food hall concept where you basically have 11 mini restaurants in an area. Um, but unlike in some of the cities where you can do this today, you don't have to go um, to the, the booth itself and order at the booth. So it's a tablet that you have and you can just order at the tablet from really a mix from any of the 11 ones. So you can have some Indian food and some from the salad bar and some from here. And then you can actually share very well with larger groups as well. So that's what makes it so popular. And uh, that's why we would definitely have this on all the ships going forward. We're looking into, can we bring that to existing ships as well? Yeah, I love that. I was there every night and at the theatre. So I'm looking forward to seeing the yeah. ships again, seeing Beetlejuice. It will be amazing. Thank you so much for your time today, Kevin. And thanks for telling us all about NCL. Thank you very much, Sarah.